One and one without looking TV show powered by Zoom. I'm Alan Preston. And hi, I'm Annette Watkins. You know, we just got back from the NFB, the National Federation of the Blind in Tampa, and we're very happy and proud to meet many of you in person at that conference. Say, Annette, did you know that today is White King? That's the no, day. We, uh, that we uh, acknowledge all the people that travel by white cane and with guide dogs. I didn't know that. And uh, did you know that yesterday was World Sight Day? I didn't know that either. Thank you for enlightening me, Alan. Um, anyways, on today's show, we will meet Flo Dudek, administrator of the Blind Side of Cooking with Flo on Facebook. She's preparing a pear and apple crisp. That's right. And to go along with her delicious pear and apple crisp, I will be making nice cream. Yes, I said nice cream. I'm predominantly vegan, but even whether you eat meat or not, this tasty, sweet treat is just awesome and healthy. Nice rhyming, Annette. Even though, we, even though we didn't plan it this way, it sounds like Flo's pear and apple crisp and yours nice cream are the perfect combination for a fall dessert. Yes, I hope so. I, I think it will be because there's many out there with a sweet tooth. But just as a reminder to everybody out there, all of us on the Cooking Without Looking show are either blind or visually impaired. So without further ado, let's get set for the deliciously sweet Cooking Without Looking. Yes, let's get started. Thank you, Alan. So as Alan mentioned, today we have with us Flo Dudek. Flo has an amazing page on Facebook called The Blind Side of Cooking. I love that. It's so cute. The Blind Side of Cooking. She is with us today and we want to welcome Flo to our show. There's some more rhyming for you. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. How are you today and where are you, where are you coming from? What, what state are you in? I am in Lorenberg, North Carolina. That's where I reside. Okay, that's fantastic. That's Fantastic. I heard you just the other day on the Cooking Without Looking podcast show, and I was very impressed with you because it seems like nothing gets you down. Can you please tell us how you keep your spirits up and tell us a little bit about your blindness? Okay. Um, the way I keep my spirits up is I have a great faith in God. He helps me see the light when there isn't any. Um, and I believe that's how I grew up too. And so I still hold that as value. Um, I started off having X, then they found macular degeneration, retinal detachment, myopia, and glaucoma. I also have multiple brain aneurysms. There's a cerebral aneurysm, which ruptured in 2015, which made me lose the right eyesight of my, what was left in it. Um, and then I had a craniotomy done in 2018 to fix that because it was going to rupture again. And then they found an ocular aneurysm also in my brain. So, you know, I'm a head case. <laughs> oh, a head case. I like that. Well, you just had a few. Goodness, just, you went, yeah, you you know, went it, through the mill. It may take us longer to do certain things, but we can do it. I love your attitude and you're so sweet and so upbeat. And, you know, I understand also that you're trying to take care of your health and eat healthier because yes. from what I understand, diabetes runs in your family and you yeah. want to, even though this is a sweet treat, it's made with pears and apples. We love to hear how you prepare this. And this is a perfect dish for someone who's trying to, to be healthier. Yeah. And because it has fruit in it and, what I use is I don't use regular brown sugar. I'll use um, stevia brown sugar or Splenda brown sugar, a sweetener brown sugar, or you can make your own. 
with okay, great. Do you want to get started and prepare this for us? Oh, we'll just I, keep watching and see how you do it. I already have the three app three. I paid three apples. I peeled and cubed them and put them in a bowl with um, three pears that I peeled and cubed and put them in the bowl. And then I sprinkled lemon juice on them so they wouldn't turn. And now I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I have braille measuring teaspoons. I'm also learning braille, by the way. Um, we have a quarter cup of cubed cold butter that goes in there. And then we have the brown sugar with the sprinkle of sprinkle or two of cinnamon in it. And then we just mix it up and you can prepare your pan and spray it. And then when this is done mixing up, you just pour it into the pan and then top it off with the toppings. And that should be good. And just pour it into the pan, which is here. Did you say you have to spray that pan or you don't need to? Yes, you spray it or you use um, butter. Okay. And then you just squash it down. And this is why I use an apron because then I can wipe my hands on it. <laughs> Good tip. And it saves my clothes. Okay, yes. now for the topping. Whoops. I just knocked that over. I have the quarter cup of almond flour, the brown sugar, the oats, oats for crunchiness, and the walnuts. Mm. And that brown sugar, I already put the cinnamon in that brown sugar. And then all you do is you mix that up. I'm gonna use my hands. Oh, I forgot the butter. Everything's better with butter, right? That's right, cold cubed butter. And I already have it cubed up. Preparation makes it so much easier when you do this stuff. I always prep my meals ahead of time, even right. if it's me. And then you just mix this up and sprinkle it sprinkle it on top you mix it up until it comes a crumbly consistency right and why do you use the almond butter instead of whole wheat flour um the almond flour there's more moisture in it but it's healthier for you okay. especially if you're a diabetic almond flour is healthier than there's let there's I'll make cookies, chocolate chip cookies or something with the almond flour. And when I make a cookie about probably two inch in size, maybe there's only three carbohydrates in each cookie. So there's a lot, a lot less carbohydrates in almond flour than there is in regular or wheat flour. Okay, well, I'm going to send you my address so you can mail me some of those. Yeah, I have several recipes from, you know, my sister. Um, um, waffles made with almond flour. We do pancakes. Nice. And they're so good, too. I bet. Yeah, I've used almond flour before. It's awesome. I forgot to run. I lost your video. Yes, because... I got a phone call and I forgot to put it on do not disturb. Oh, okay, no worries. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay, naturally. Okay, now it's back. <laughs> All right, now I'm sprinkling this stuff on the topping and I'm smoothing it around. And then you put it in the oven for about 20 minutes depending upon your oven at 350, 350 degrees. And 
Let's go and hit my oven. There we go. And I already have one made. And this is what it looks like when it's done. I don't know if y'all can see it. I can't see it very well, but I wish we could smell it. It probably smells so good, right? Yes, apples. Mm. I'm trying to hold it towards the. You're doing good. Just lean it a little bit, tilt it a little bit more. Just tilt it the other way. No, the other way. I'm sorry. Yeah, like that, and move back just a tad. Move back a tad, and then tilt a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more the other way. Okay, that's pretty good. You can see it now. It looks like it's golden on top. If I could see it correctly, mm -hmm. a little golden. Shows that yeah. it's done. And you're saying that you could, you were telling me earlier that you can freeze this, right? Yes. Make it, you wrap it in foil, double wrap it, and then freeze it. How long can you keep it in the freezer for before you take it out again? And do you have to bake it again? Um, you, you can take it out of the freezer in the morning and have it that afternoon. You don't have to bake it. But if you want it warm, you can warm it up in the oven for about five minutes. Okay, or the microwave. Yeah, or yes. Okay, and you could put some ice cream on top or nice Absolutely. cream. Who doesn't love ice cream? Yeah. Well, that sounds so good. That sounds very good, Flo. I know you put a lot of work into preparing. You mentioned that you get all your ingredients ready before. I do that as well. I know it takes a lot of time and prep, but you made yes. this recipe look so easy. And it looks so delicious and I know it it's, smells it's, wonderful. So I wanted to let people know where they can get this recipe if they want, you know, go ahead and try it for themselves for the holidays. All you have to do is go to the Cooking Without Looking website and that's www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Okay, so go there and get Flo's recipe and try this out on your family for the holidays. We've got Halloween coming up. We got Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thank you, Flo, so much for joining us. That was wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Hey, hey Flo, I got a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. You were mentioning a little earlier about the stevia and the various other artificial sweeteners. Uh, you being diabetic and all that, are there some that are better than others, and why would that be? Could you, um, you to me, it all depends upon taste. Now, I don't like the taste of sweet and low. Um, I do like the taste of it's something called erythrosol, and my sister is the one who told me about that, so I use that one. It doesn't taste like a sweetener, and it's a it, it's a sweetener that's really good for diabetics as well. Or is there's monk fruit, which my sister, I never tasted it, but she said she didn't like the taste of it. And if she's not going to like it, I know I'm not going to like it. Okay. You know? <laughs> and the other question I had for you, the uh, almond flour, uh, does that have an almond taste to it at all? Um, a little bit. A little bit and it's really good last week i made some almond cookies because i promised a couple of people that i would bring them some almond cookies when i got back from vacation and they really loved the the cookies and they come out really soft so if you like a soft cookie there's more moisture in almond flour than there is in regular flour oh i didn't know that mm -hmm. well I wonder if any of our audience members have any questions for Flo. Uh, well, I want to add to this, to follow Flo on her Facebook page, The Blind Side of Cooking. Go to her website, I mean, I'm sorry, go to her Facebook page and you'll see recipes. I checked it out. There's a recipe for every day she has something on there. So it, she is chef extraordinaire. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much. That recipe sounds absolutely wonderful. Um, I may try that one. And now I have dessert for tonight. See that? <laughs> <laughs> got to go out and get all the ingredients, and I got a show to do this afternoon. <laughs> well, now we have the second part of our dessert combo, Annette's. Nice cream, I like that. 
Annette, tell us a little bit about why you chose this recipe. Well, thank you, Alan. I didn't know that Flo was gonna make a dessert, but this works out perfect because you could actually put the ice cream on top of the apple pear crisp if you want to. Um, the reason I chose this recipe is because, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm lazy. <laughs> I wanted something easy. This is so easy. And that's maybe make four ingredients if you include the bananas. So it's, it's easy on the brain. It's easy on the pocketbook because you're using um, bananas. And it's easy on the, um, the your health, on your body weight. Because I know when I eat ice cream, I just want to keep eating it, keep eating it. And this is good for you. And it's not fattening. It has very low fat, very low sodium, but lots and lots of taste. And more importantly, it's so versatile. I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can have this ice cream. And it's just endless because not only can you put toppings on top of it, which I'll show you, but you can infuse this ice cream with just about anything that you like. So let's get started on the recipe. First of all, what I did was, oh, lost the video here. Hope you guys can see me. We can took, see it just fine. Okay, great. I took three bananas and I picked three because three is about good for two people for a serving. And for those that can see, I cut them into coin-like slices last night and I put them in this glass container and I froze them. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking all the frozen coin-shaped banana pieces and putting them in my food processor. Now that's good for about three to four or five bananas. But if you're going to make a bigger quantity, you'd want to use your Vitamix because I, I messed up. I tried to put too much in the food processor and I don't have a very big food processor. Mine's only eight cups but your Vitamix will be able to handle more unless you have a big food processor. Okay, so now all my bananas are in the food processor. Now listen carefully. These are the three ingredients. Very simple. First of all, vanilla extract. Now you could use the liquid if you like, but I have what's called a vanilla powder. For those that can see, I ordered this on Amazon. It's just purer than the vanilla extract. There's no artificial color and there's no um, alcohol in it. Okay, so oh. even alcohol. But it smells, mm, I just love this stuff. So vanilla. Vanilla. -y. Is that a word? It is <laughs> lots, lots of vanilla. So that's a tablespoon of vanilla that I put into the food processor. Then I'm going to put a tablespoon of maple syrup. And this recipe is also going to be on our website. Now, the maple syrup is optional. If you don't want it that sweet, or like Flo was saying, you could use the stevia or some other kind of favorite sweetener, you can add it to it if you Honey. don't feel the bananas are sweet enough. Another ingredient and last ingredient is coconut milk. Now, this is from the can. It's the full fat coconut. Okay, don't get me wrong. You can use a non-fat almond milk. You could use soy milk. You could use any kind of plant milk that you want. But I chose this because I wanted it just a little bit creamier. So I chose the coconut milk from the can. All right, so I've got that all in here. And what we're gonna do now is turn this on. I got a new food processor the other day. Let's see if I could work it. Okay, ready, set, go. So once in a while, you're gonna stop it and you're gonna push the bananas down with a spatula down the sides. This is the part I like because you could always lick the spatula as long as you wash it again <laughs> before you put it in, but you can definitely taste it. Okay, let's try that again. Cover your ears if you need to. Ready, set, go. Mm. Mm. 
No. If you don't like bananas, you might not like this recipe, but I'll tell you what, if you want to cut down on the banana, because there's like a slight banana taste, but I noticed when I infuse this mixture with like say mint, the other day I put mint in it and I couldn't taste any banana. It was amazing. All I tasted was some mint and cream, like a mint ice cream. Okay, one last time and then we'll put it away to rest. I think it's done. It looks so creamy. Now, some of you may be asking, well, why don't you just put the mixture, just take regular bananas, don't freeze them, put all your ingredients, your vanilla, your maple syrup, and your coconut milk, then freeze it. Well, you know what? I'm not sure the answer to that, only that I've tried it both times, and it seems so much better freezing the bananas first. I don't know what it is. I think possibly the color. The color looks more, let me see if I could describe it to you. It's actually like a pale, 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 pale yellow. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, you can see me here, I'm going to put this mixture into another glass container. I have a small, it's probably um, five inches by six, or something like that because this is only for two people. I'm taking my spatula and I'm scooping out the nice cream into the glass container. It's nice and creamy. I smell the vanilla. Oh, this looks so good. Now, if I was gonna infuse it, that's another tip. You can infuse this with basil, with mint, and with cacao powder, which is probably most people's favorite because you use cocoa powder to make a chocolate and ice cream. I didn't do that today, but that's no. a simple fix. You just put some cacao powder. I'm gonna taste this. Mmm, so sweet and creamy. Okay. Now I have it all in my little glass pan and it goes in the freezer for at least four to six hours. Now I made another one last night. I'm gonna put this in the freezer. For this one, I used nine bananas. I know, I've been like going crazy with the bananas. I feel like a monkey this week. I've been making this constantly. But let me show you three different ways you can fix this, okay? We got your ice cream scooper. We got your frozen bananas cream. You take your cup and we're going to make our, ooh. Scooping it up, I'm giving, I'm gonna give myself two scoops of this. Now my favorite, I have to say I'm pretty biased, my favorite toppings for this dessert is first of all some where did I put it okay we're gonna have some salted caramel chips salted caramel <laughs> chips I found these amazing lilies I think you would like this flow these lilies chocolate chips have no sugar at all mm. yeah yeah they're made with stevia and these yeah. salt have you seen these before Yes. But they're amazing. Okay, so we put the chips on there and then we got some caramel sauce. Caramel sauce, I gave you the recipe when I, it'll be on the web. It's just coconut sugar, a quarter cup with two tablespoons of the cocoa milk. And I'm just drizzling, drizzling, drizzling this caramel sauce. It's my faux caramel sauce. It's not your traditional, but it tastes Amazing. I'm drizzling it over. We like a lot. So let me just put probably three teaspoons drizzled over this. Last but not least, uh, this is optional, but since this is a salted caramel, I'm gonna take just a pinch. 
just a pinch of salt on the top and one over the shoulder for good luck. I got that from Rachel. Okay, so here you have your salted caramel ice cream with chips. The next one, my mouth is watering. I don't know about you, but. Um, okay, now we we got next, what's that? I said, now we have dinner, my pear and apple crisp and your ice cream. Yeah, who needs who needs a main entree, right? Okay, now this really is, sounds good, Annette. It does. So it sounds it. like it's really good for you too. Is that right? Well, it has to be. All it is is bananas. But you know what? I could have froze this longer. I didn't do that until this morning, so it really took a long time to freeze this up. It's better to do it overnight. Mm -hmm. But I I got busy last night. Forgot to do it. But I did it this morning at six in the morning. Okay, for this one, I took two scoops of the nice cream and I crushed up some almonds. I just put them in a plastic bag and took a little hammer to them. <laughs> I know, I'm so violent. Okay, so we got some crushed almonds and then we're gonna put some berries on there. Mm. We got a blueberry, strawberry, and blackberry mixture. If I had whipped cream, I'd also do that. So now you have your salted caramel with your chips and you have your almonds with your berries. Last but not least, I think the kitties like this one the best. Can anybody guess what it is? It's pretty simple. What do you think we're going to put on top of this one? Chocolate. <clears throat> chocolate something. Well, you know what? I should have had chocolate something, but that's just too easy. And you can do it at home. If you want chocolate, juice all over it, go for it. Put chocolate chips all over it. This one is sprinkles. Oh, that okay. Oh, of course. Yeah, the color, beautiful colored yeah. sprinkles. So we got sprinkles, we got fruit, and we got salted caramel. So we got three different types. Anybody could see that. I don't know if you could see it out there, but tell me, tell me what you think. No. Now let me try one of these for you to make sure it's okay. <laughs> I have to no. check it out. Let's see. This is the salted caramel. Oh. Mm. Hey, can I lick the bowl? Mm. Mm. Creaminess of the bananas with the crunchiness of the salted chips. Mm. With the caramel sauce. This is heavenly. Mm. I have a feeling I wouldn't be able to wait until it froze. Mm. I ate it all while it was still soft. Well, that's all I got for you today. I know it's um, quite a bit to take in, but uh, very quick to devour. So I hope I hope you'll try this at home and let us know what you think about the nice cream. It has so many benefits, including even potassium and all those good vitamins and minerals I didn't even tell you about. But uh, that's all I got for you, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you very much, Annette. I wonder if anybody in our audience today has any questions for Annette. Nope. Uh, okay. Um, well, you can find Annette's nice cream recipe on our website at www dot cooking without looking tv dot wordpress dot com yes and also I want to encourage you to go to our website and look at the top and click on the world vision foundation and go ahead and make a donation because this donation that you get no matter how big how small that's going to help us continue with our podcasts and the shows that you see today Yes, our Cooking Without Looking TV podcasts are available anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Yes, and you can also go on the YouTube channel for Cooking Without Looking and rewatch any of these episodes, including this one here, so you can get Flo's recipe for apple crisp and my recipe for the nice cream. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, you know what? You know, we had a nice conversation about how Flo goes grocery shopping. Um, yes. Did you guys want to try that? Okay. Sounds good. Tell us, Flo. 
Uh, yes. I know that you and Annette were having a conversation, but I'll ask the question. How do you go about getting your groceries? Okay, well, what I have to do is I take a transportation called SCATS Medical Transportation. They're located here, you know, here in town. And I take them to the doctors or to the grocery store, not to restaurants, to the grocery store. And they'll drop me off and I'll go to Walmart because it's one stop shopping for me. I can get everything I need there. And then I go to the customer service counter and I ask for somebody to shop with me and they find me somebody. Most of them know me by now in that Walmart where I go. And we'll go shopping and usually, you know, I'll say what products I want, a certain kinds, and then they'll let me feel the container to make sure it's the correct size that I want. And then we check out and, you know, checking out, you have to give them your PIN number, which I don't like, but you don't have a choice because their screens are not accessible for those of us to use when you do check, when you check out, self-checkout or anything. But that's how I do my shopping. That's very interesting. I, I like the idea of Walmart too. I, I go there because I also travel by bus. And... Mm -hmm. It is one shop, one stop for absolutely everything. Um, I uh, have difficulty sometimes picking out the individual food, and your Walmart must be a little better than ours because I got a hard time finding somebody to go around with me. Um, yeah, well, I don't let it lie either. What do you do for shopping, Annette? Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you, Skip never really wants to come in the store with me. He'll always drive me, but he doesn't really like to go in. So I respect that because I just like to really take my time. Not that I like to take my time often, but I have to because it takes me a long time to find things. And God forbid they move things. Like there's a Trader oh, Joe's yeah. in one part of my town that has things in a certain place. And then they opened a new Trader Joe's. And even though it's the same store, they're individually owned. And he has stuff all different places. He doesn't have all his organics in one spot. So I have to always ask people, you know, if you don't mind, can you please help me find this? And they can't tell that I'm visually impaired. So I have my magnifier. I said, I have a hard time seeing. And then able to either take me to the item or, you know, point to where that, a lot of times I'll just tell them, just, you know, point what, <laughs> what direction do I go in for this item? And then they send me off on my way, but thank God I have my magnifier. And if y'all could see this, I got this from Magnify America. So it's a 10 X and I'm able to look at the products um, individually and, and read the labels, but it, it is, it is a big challenge. I spend, sometimes I spend two hours at the grocery store. You don't want to go shopping with me, <laughs> but I eventually get everything done, but it, it is, is a challenge. I come home, I need a nap for sure. I do a lot of shopping at Walmart, but we also have a store here that's local to the southeastern United States called Publix. And there's one my local community has a bus goes back and forth to several times a day. And I'm fairly well known. My, me and my guide dog, Lynx, laying right here by my foot now, uh, are very well known in the store. And uh, we kind of know where the stuff is we usually get, like the yogurt and that. And I have enough eyesight that I use a magnifier to see exactly what flavor it is, despite the fact some of the other customers say questions like, uh, are you tasting that? You know, oh, my gosh. But that's, uh, uh, but most of the people are pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> and if there's something unusual I have to look for, like an unusual spice or there's something I don't buy very often, uh, all the people in there are very nice and helpful and, and, and able to help me. So I think your uh, flow, you go to a, a Walmart and people know you there. I go yeah. to Publix a lot because people know me there. And Annette, you have a favorite store too, right? Well, this is the problem with me. I wish we could, I could create my own store because every month I go to Aldi's, Trader Joe's, Publix, and Walmart. Believe it or not, only certain stores have certain things that I like and not all stores have the same thing. So 
Um, I don't go to just one store and I don't know if they know me or not. Um, down here in South Florida, it's just so busy. People are coming in and out all the time. They probably recognize me from my magnifier because people see me use it. They're like, oh, wow, I need to get one of those. That's great. You can read the labels and everything. Oh, wow. So uh, it gets their attention that they think I'm just trying to read the labels. I don't know that I'm visually impaired. So I usually have to tell the uh, manager something to, if they could help me find the item because I have a visual impairment. But everybody's pretty nice if you ask them and you, you know tell them what your situation is. Yeah, it works. All of us are smoking in the oven. And they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's find out. Um, my cousin from Belgium is there. Terry? Terry? Hey. Hello. Terry. How are you? How, hey, what are you? Very well. How are you? Thank you. Terry. I was just thinking here in Belgium, we have an organization which is called Light and Love. And they uh, put people to do your grocery for free. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Can they come here and do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they help uh, people who are blind or bad uh, by view. Uh, they help them with uh, the house, house uh, and then the grocery and many stuff. Wow. Oh, great. Sounds good. That's, that's easy. Interesting. Does anyone else have a, a like? How do you, um, Bill, Bill Altman? How how do you go grocery shopping? Okay, there I am now. <laughs> it's Bill. I'm here in Florida as well in Daytona Beach, and uh, I do a number of different things for shopping. Most of the lot of time, I, uh, if I'm shopping in person, it will be in public where they know me. I'm totally blind, so I have someone go around with me to help me shop. And also, like the times I was here with an app called Instacart, it's pretty accessible that will help me by getting, allowing me to search for items and uh, place an order and I could have it delivered. So that's another possibility ah. for you all. That's, that's, a, really that's yes. a point I, I failed to make as well, is he's right. I mean, shopping online is amazing. I mean, if you could do that, I mean, Whole Foods delivers, Walmart delivers, and you could do it from the comfort of your own home. And you can look at a lot of the products. Right. So I do a lot that way through either Amazon, Walmart, or Whole Foods. Aldi's doesn't have a delivery yet, but you can go ahead and order it all and then pick it up at the curb. So that's helpful. I know public does as well work with them too. Did, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You said public stock. Public, stopped, public it? works within the card as well. Yes, it for does. Those up here in Florida and up into Georgia where they're located as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, I've always had difficulty picking out vegetables, things like bananas, and that. Uh, and I even went and bought one of these color identifier things, and that wasn't even very good. So I just kind of ask people now, and usually they're pretty good at the stores where they know me. Does anybody else have any good suggestions about finding good veggies? Well, Ren um, Alan, I just got to say, I bet you asked the prettiest girl in the supermarket to help you find something. <laughs> and you know what? I've asked you and you care, did, aren't any better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but bananas should be easy. You just feel them. Everybody knows. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Everybody yeah, knows a banana. You, you can tell if it's right them or not. If they're overripe, you can smell that. Yeah, that's for sure. And what I do is when I bring them home, I get, when I have somebody shop with me, I do get the ones that have, are um, barely yellow and green. So this way they have time to mature. When I get them home, I separate them and they last 
a lot longer than they would if you have them in the bundle. Okay, that's a, that's a good tip. I like that's that. Interesting. Yeah, and for the nice cream, I should have mentioned as well, you want to get the ripest bananas, but not rotten. The, night, right. the riper they are, the sweeter they are. That's just common sense. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anybody have any feedback or other questions I'd like to add? No, no. Well, from all of us here at the Cooking Without Looking TV show, we'd like to thank you very much for that pear and apple crisp recipe and for nice cream recipe. And we hope to see you again next month. Remember, Cooking Without Looking uh, find us at Cooking Without Looking, uh, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv. Oh, shoot, I got the thing wrong again. I got, I got to get it here in front of me. Uh, Cooking Without Looking TV. Dot WordPress dot com. That's it. That's oh, it. It's a I got it right, right? <laughs> and we sure hope to see you again next month. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, everyone, for joining Thanks. us. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Thank you, yeah. Renee and Annette. Flo, it was a pleasure. <laughs>